Okay, finally around page 85, the movie is over. Act 2 finishes. You should be able to end your movie right there and the audience be pretty much satisfied. Your main plot and your subplot have both had a finale. Okay, so let's go back to the notebook. The main plot is Noah is in love with Allie and he pursues her. The subplot is him building his house. By the end of the act two, when she comes to his house for the first time, at the end of act two, when she sees the newspaper clipping and she comes back into his life, they are on the boat. And she says, why didn't you write me? And he says, I wrote you 365 letters. I wrote you every day for a year. And then they kiss and then they make love and then they wake up the next morning and they're in the honeymoon stage, right? The fire is blazing. But then, act three stars. What happens? There's a disruption. They go into the door, and it's Martha, his hookup. You know, but that starts act three. We could have ended it right there. Noah and Allie are back together, end. But there's some loose strings. What about her mother? What about Lon? Is she going to stay with Lon? Is she going to come back to Noah? Like, what's going to happen there? So then act three starts a little kind of like a new movie. We gotta tie some loose ends up here. So act three is another, like, like what we were talking about, act one is a little movie, act two is a little movie, now act three has to be a little movie. And so, oh, you thought it was over, but uh oh, here we go. You could probably say that in Star Wars, when Obi-Wan Kenobi dies, that could have ended it right there. Well, everybody just go home. But act three starts. How do we start act three? What is the inciting incident in act three? We got the battle plans to the Death Star. Uh, pages 85 to 110. And this is your lessons that have been learned through your journey are applied. You show them figuring it out. So in Maze Runner, your act three is they've been trained, they've experienced, they've survived. Now they're going to apply the lessons that they've learned and really figure this whole thing out. So what do they do? Well, they figure out the door. They figure out how to get into the door and into the compound. But uh-oh, here's a twist. They're all dead. And all that's left is a recording. All right. So this is, this is, you're starting to wrap things up. So in the notebook, she leaves anyways. Even after he says, what do you want? She still leaves. But then, and then she sits down with Lon in the hotel room and she says, no, when I'm with him, I'm somebody. And when I'm with you, I'm somebody else. But I really love you. And we think, oh wow, so, so she chose Lon. And then we cut to Noah wrapped up in her blanket on his bed, you know, depressed in a fetus, fetus position. And then she comes back. One of the greatest twists in any epic I've ever seen is when Darth Vader's close behind Luke Skywalker and he's about to get him. And they thought Han Solo, you know, Han Solo never was fighting with them. And he left. And then all of a sudden he just comes back and uh, shoots Darth Vader's wingman out. And then the wingman crashes into Darth Vader and sends Darth Vader propelling into outer space. And then now Luke can take that final shot. Pow, pow. Everybody survived. They get these gold medals, and then you, you end with a final shot. And in Star Wars, they, they have their gold medals, and everybody salutes some, and then the movie ends, but just like that, going out of the bay. Now, if you want to go back to Love Story, uh, we come full throttle back to the retirement home. So in the beginning, the guy was rowing the boat during the sunset. He's rowing the boat during the sunset. Older Allie is looking down from a very romantic view. And then at the very end of that movie, they are having a romantic dinner, watching a different sunset. You know, a day has passed. But we come back full circle to where we began. But we're different. Everybody's different because we went on a journey and we came back. Lord of the Rings, they start in the Shire. They go on the journey. At the end of the trilogy, they come back to the Shire. You see? But we're different. We came full circle. And that's it. But like I said, that's a mold for you to use. And then... When you when you've written a pretty good script based on that mold, then feel free to take the mold away and let the lines bleed a little. Uh, one last thing, and then we can move on to something else. This is very very important. This is the 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 greatest uh, piece of advice I can give you as a screenwriter, and the greatest hidden secret. There are professional scriptologists, script doctors, that have been working in Hollywood for 20 years. And they will read your screenplay and they will doctor it, tell you what works, what doesn't, for like, I wouldn't pay more than $500 or $600 for it. So for as, and you think, oh, $500, $500 is a lot of money. Not if you're really serious about filmmaking. Like for novels, it takes a good two grand of editing to get your novel in 
spit spot, perfect shape. Two grand if you're in indie publishing. So if you're in indie filmmaking and a guy that or a guy or a girl that's been doing this for twenty years and will do it for less than six hundred dollars, that's a deal. And if you can turn around and sell your screenplay or make a movie and and net five hundred thousand dollars, five hundred bucks is pocket change compared to that. You know, but you have to budget that and decide whether or not it's going to be worth your time. I would prefer someone living in either New York or Los Angeles or Southern California who has been out there in New York or, or Southern California working in the film industry for 20 years and has a track record of doctoring screenplays for certain screenwriters or studios. Don't just hire someone because they've been teaching theater for 20 years at a, at a university in you know Pennsylvania or something more like that. All right, be, be careful with who you hire.